Okay. Hi, Julie. <clears throat> and get my voice going here. <clears throat> How you doing? <clears throat> Sorry, got to get my voice started here. Cat's got a shadow on my page. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> How you doing? I should tweet. Let me go ahead and take a little picture here. Let's see. <laughs> How you doing, Andrew? Let's see. Darla, Tavon, Tavorna, how y'all doing? I'm trying to get a quick picture here. What are y'all doing today? Anybody working on anything? Try to keep up with chat. I know. Hi, Louise. Yes, happy hump day. Yes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <sighs> Let's see if I can get this back to what it was here. Diane, who else is here? Thanks, everybody, for popping in. I'm trying to get my, I took a picture to tweet, so let's see. Nature, nature, <laughs> I can't spell. Oh my goodness, nature journaling. One second, guys, I'm tweeting. I don't like to tweet till I actually go live to make sure everything's working. Hi, Ann. A little cat picture. I should have had this ready, but I didn't. Uh, let's see. All right, there we go. Hi, Terry Snow, Nancy. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm here. <laughs> so I got my book in from Amazon that I talked about on Monday. Got it in. Let me tilt this just a little more so there's not a glare. Hi, Karina. Oh, what a morning. My cats, yesterday, Oliver went for his checkup at the vet. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Jen Oz. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hi, Pink Hut. I can stay for a bit, but then I have to take... Okay, well, thanks for stopping in. So, uh, yesterday... Uh, Oliver went to the vet for his checkup and you don't go in. They come, you, you know, they're, they're in their cage. They come out, take the cage, take them in, bring them out, take them home. He was fine. It's just, you know, it was, it was fine. So anyway, um, come home and now the two cats, cause Malibu's not going till a, a couple more weeks. They go one by one, you know? And so 
he they they are hissing each other all the time it's, and it's her it's like she's saying you went off and you came home with new smells i'm mad at you so now they just hiss at each other all the time since yesterday it's like what in the world so i don't know i don't know what's up it's her it's her that starts it then they get in a little rumble they always do they've always done that before excuse a squeaky chair but you know it's it's my favorite chair um so now they just hiss at each other and they get in these rumbles more than usual more than usual so hi uh, linda bazia baz bazinia bazinia bazina so anyway i don't know why she has got her nose out of whack because he went to the vet yesterday and she didn't go okay thanks pacola she doesn't recognize his scent it takes a couple days okay and it's like, you know, maybe I should brush him more to get his skin moving. <laughs> I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Get the other scent off of him. But I've never had that happen before. I've never had the cats get upset with each other because one of them went to the vet. Uh, yeah, it's so weird. So, Carlos and my cats did that after the vet's visit, the smell. Yeah, well, I figured it was the smell. But it's like, oh my gosh, it's come on, come on, people, come on. <laughs> Let's get with it, kitty cats. <laughs> Y'all are brother and sister and love each other. Don't don't be doing this. Don't de be doing this mess. <laughs> I'm reading with pugs, Jen. Good to see you. Good to see you. How you been? So, um, so anyway, I think that's what it is. Um, I think that's what it is, Pacola. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so if I go running out to break up a fight outside my door. Now, if they go downstairs and fight, I may not hear it. Hi, Flo. Let's see. So Louise, I know I'm missing people coming in. Thanks, everybody, for popping in. Hi, Megan. So thanks, everybody, for being here. Thanks for the thumbs up. Thanks for the likes. Thanks for the lurkers. Hi, lurkers out there. <laughs> but um, So anyway, I thought I would show this new book. I got a sketchbook set up to, to play in. I pulled out some watercolors if we need some color. These are the ones. Now, Janet sent me these M. Graham watercolors. Now, not all of these. There's a few in here that I added. But for the most part, these are those M. Graham honey-based watercolors. And Janet squeezed out some and sent them to me. She put them in that wood box tray, this double tray. Well, I, I wanted them all flat here, so I bought one of these neat mean meat in meat and trays and so i transferred them all in here oh here comes the boy cat now what are y'all gonna do no 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 get down get down y'all stop what is it with you two oh and um so i transferred them into this tray so i could add a couple other colors and i'm gonna use her box for another other watercolors um so i've been playing with them as you can see yeah, I'm not going to let them roll around this Azure. They rolled around, well, Malibu rolled around in my pan pastels, you know, about a year ago. And that stuff does not come off. It's so highly pigmented. You don't want your cats rolling around in your pan pastels. I mean, they're non-toxic, but it, the point is, it's like, it doesn't come off. <laughs> Hi, Kalora. How's, you, how's the job going? How's the new job? Hi, Maya. Um, anybody else that's coming in that I missed? So I pulled this out in case we want to add some color. We'll play with this. But this is just one of those uh, sketchbooks. The, what do you call it? Um, you know, the Hobby Lobby brand uh, sketchbooks. So I set it up to write notes in 
from this book and do some studies in. And so I just thought I'd make one just so y'all could see how I'm going to kind of work in it. So I did this yesterday. Well, last night, actually. I did this last night, um, setting this book up for studies. And I did sketch out some peppers this morning. The cats won't hardly let me. But I cut up one of my peppers out of my garden. And uh, I did kind of sketch it out. So I thought we would play with this. Now, I've, had, I've only got through one chapter. I've only got through one chapter. Uh, and really, I'm two pages short. Two pages short of a chapter. This baby is in, it's intense. It's got a lot to it. So if y'all were here on Monday at the end of the show, I showed a bunch of nature drawing and art nature journaling books that I already had. And uh, so I ordered this one. I told you I'd show it when it came in. Well, it came in yesterday. And um, so I started taking some notes out of it, as you saw. And then uh, so I asked Janet. I said, Janet, this is the book I was. She goes, oh, I already have that one. Well, well of course you do. What was I thinking? <laughs> I, I, didn't, I don't remember showing it. But uh, so anyway, I thought we would do a little bit talking about nature journaling from the Law's Guide of Nature, Drawing and Journaling. It's a big book. Yeah, it's a big, thick book. It's got 300 and something pages, 300 and uh, 300 pages. So I just covered one of these um, Hobby Lobby sketchbooks. I mean, it's just the, I mean, it's the thin paper. It's, it's drawn, you know, it's just like copy. Well, it's a little, it's a little better than copy paper. But I'll tell you why I like this particular pad of paper. The paper is white, not cream. I like cream paper for some things, but when I'm drawing something where I'm going to add color and I want the color true, I like the really bright white paper. And you can get that in just copy paper if you just want to make you a sketchbook out of copy paper. This is just, like I said, this is just some cheap paper. I really wanted this for more note taking than the actual going out and journaling. When I do that, I might take this one. This might be my going out, but it's kind of small. I like to draw things big and, and, and the actual sizes and things like that. So this might be a little small, but we'll see. So uh, this will be more convenient. This is more convenient if you go somewhere. But um, I like something at least this size. So I covered it. I just uh, glue sticked down a piece of scrapbook paper and sanded all the edges. When you sand the edges, when you glue something on, a, uh, when you glue something on like a, you know, to make a cover or something, if you sand the edges, it kind of seals your paper in. It, it just, it just does better if you kind of sand the edges. And I just have a designated uh, uh, fingernail file, like the ones that are made for acrylic nails, because I don't have acrylic nails. Um, but the one that's made for acrylic nails, it's real, like almost like sandpaper. And so it's easy to sand edges and things like that if you have one. Hi, Janet. I was just telling everybody that <laughs> I said, oh, Janet, you got to get this book. And you go, I already have it. And then look, Janet, here's my um, here's my M grams and some of the additional ones I added in my meat in um, meat in case. So I got it ready if I want to add. Uh, well, I do plan on doing some a little bit of watercolor with what I'm doing but anyway uh hi your little red wagon girl i have been awake since 2 30 a.m against my preferences and now the sun is too bright to go back to sleep well you're you stay here hang out get you a, your idea notebook out your society of idea notebook write down some ideas or just you know whatever y'all write on your your travelers a composition book Oh, I got to show y'all what I, <laughs> well, maybe I'll wait. I'll see. So anyway, so I kind of want to concentrate on this, but I did glue some composition books together, maybe a big massive one. Uh, <laughs> it is a cool palette. Well, you have it, Janet, in a different color. I, I think I, I ordered, well, it, it said when I ordered it, I was getting the teal one, but this is the one that came. I don't really care, but the teal one was kind of pretty. But uh, so, yeah. Okay, Gaga. Oh, get well. I saw you post that you weren't feeling well. Take care of yourself and stay safe. 
Um, let's see. Um, yeah, everybody's telling her to feel better. Two weeks right her jaw. Just okay. All right. Well, just watch then. So let's see. Um, so yeah, so Janet sent me some M grams, which are honey based watercolors. And they never, they're they're always kind of if you want to call them sticky, but they're so pigmented. They're very highly, highly pigmented. They're like the pan pastels of watercolor. And they're, look, can you just see where I just pulled some out here and was watering them down? Look how pigmented they are. So anyway, I might use these if we do a little. So uh, I, I will go through some of the book. Like I said, I worked through the first chapter and what I'm doing is and here's where I started drawing some of the peppers here out of my garden. I pulled some peppers and, and sketched them out and I'll lay them back out if I want to paint them. But I pulled those out. I also pulled out some strawberries here. <laughs> just pulled something out of my refrigerator. I just wanted to do something, you know, nature related. And then I started taking notes. So you can see here's all the notes that I've taken so far. I wrote them large. And there's a reason I wrote them large like this because I'm going to decorate around them. But this one is going to be, it's its not necessarily just like just to take out and do my nature journaling, but I wanted to write notes uh, from the book. So there's my uh, title there. So, um, oh, tell him we th we're thinking of him, Jen Oz, and hope he gets well soon. <clears throat> He's recovering really well. Okay, good. Hey, Mark. Mark, I went back, I went to look for a video from you, and you haven't posted a video in I don't even know how long. You need to post a new video, Mark. <laughs> but I went to your channel because I hadn't seen you, and I went, well, has Mark been posting anything? I have you on a, a notification, so you haven't. Did you, did you stop getting, uh, what do you call it, uh, the sketch boxes? Yes, we need to see some more Mark videos. Um, let's see. Who else am I missing? Hi, Julie. Julie Topaz. Happy Wednesday. Happy. Let's do, she usually says happy, wonderful Wednesday. <laughs> Good to see you. Uh, let's see. I know I'm missing people coming in. Thanks, everybody. Um, so I've been writing my notes in here, and I've been leaving. I, I wrote big. I don't normally write this big when I'm taking the notes out of a book. I would take something like this out of. I'd take these notes like in a in a um, TN traveler's notebook kind of thing, but because I just wanted to do some sketching and showing you guys some sketching and stuff, I did it big, and I left. I did some quotes out of the book, and then I started, I left places where I could um, draw flowers and stuff in there, and uh, or whatever, vegetables, and then I just, I did sketch out, um, I did sketch out some peppers, so I'll go through this again, you know, but I was going to show you the book first, but that's my note-taking book for this. Uh, hi, Chris, uh, CL Christine. <laughs> Good to see you. Christine does a, I think it's a Sunday afternoon color and chat. I think she does hers on Sunday afternoons. I try to, Sundays it's, it's hard. I barely catch Zandra. I don't know who else, uh, streams on Sundays. I try to catch Zandra around four, four thirty. But I think Christine streams before that, sometime in the afternoon. And sometimes Patty Tolly Parish, too. <clears throat> so, but every, everybody records, so you can always catch up. Let's see. Julie says, I found the meat and pan and tubes of M. Graham on Amazon and book. <laughs> Yippee. I don't know. M. Grahams are not cheap. I'm just going to tell you, Janet sent me some because she had tubes of them. And so she squeezed me out 
just enough to fill some pans here. And again, so a few of these are not in Graham. I've added a couple of other um, Prima colors in here. <coughs> but for the most part, for the most part, they're the M. Grams that uh, Janet sent me. So, okay. So Christine says every, every Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern. So, okay. Um, I know I'm missing people. So anyway, guys, if y'all are just here for the first time or lurking and haven't been around or didn't know, you know, watching a recording, I stream every win Monday and Wednesday, 9 a.m. Eastern. But I usually come on a few minutes before to say hi, talk about what, you know, if I got something new or something like that and uh, say hi to everybody because then I can just concentrate on the chat for a few minutes because once you start working on a project, you can't watch every single word. But if you do talk to me, guys, put it in caps so I'll be more apt to see it. Uh, mo the mods can answer probably most of the questions you have. And uh, make sure you are in 1080p, 720 or 1080p, whichever one you, you, can, sh you can use on your uh, device or your computer. But I'm streaming in 1080p. So um, you, you can uh, make sure that your little setting wheel is um, is adjusted let's see and Pacola put a link to Christine's channel so uh, go find a uh, Christine CL Aldridge for coloring coloring and she she makes her own color books she does a lot of mandalas and flowers and she does other things now too but she um, has her books are on Amazon uh, let's see. What else? What else? Hedwig, Hedwig, Hedwig Heavenly. Good morning from Germany. Good morning in Germany. Uh, let's see. Hi, 3G Brenda. How's it going? I call her, it's G3 Brenda, but I call her 3G. I always have called her 3G. <laughs> Hi, Scoobs. Good to see you. This lurker say hi to uh, Well, you're a family lurker, though, Scoobs. You're a family lurker. <laughs> uh, my shopping was interested. Okay, a little creative. Uh, Maya, yeah, I'm usually not here to catch light, but I'm glad I was able to make it. Yay. Good to see you. Um, let's see. Hi, Julie. I know I'm missing people, but I'm trying to catch everybody before we I turn turn my face to the book. <laughs> uh, so what's everybody been working on this week? Or what have y'all been doing? Any classes? Um, any projects you're working on? Here come the cats. So I'm gonna have to watch so they don't step in the because this is this stays sticky. You can't you you can't be messing with this just like you can't be messing with pan pastels but i think uh i think she's going to lay down and take a nap over there so are you going to nap baby are you going to nap little princess <laughs> uh So let's see. All right, guys. Well, I guess I will. I'm going to close this for now until I go to use it because the cat's right there. And if I'm not paying real close attention, let's, she'll get in it, you know. So let's just set that aside. And I want to show the book that I got here. And again, I may be using a smaller book like this one that, um, that uh, Katie in Alabama sent me. I might be using this one for uh, going out and drawing. But uh, for now, I, I, I'm taking notes from this book in this sketchbook. So if you all have any questions, put them in caps. Let me fix, adjust my chair here, my big fluffy blanket I sit on. And it is a squeaky chair, but it's 25 years old and it's comfortable. So uh, let's see. We'll see what anybody's been working on. 
Uh, do you have the, did Janet send you a copy of this book, um, Julie? I know Janet has it. And because I, after I got it, oh, because Janet's <laughs> the M. Graham paints equal cat hair magnet. I will remember that. <laughs> and uh, let's see, let's get the light there. So anyway, I told Janet, I said, I got a new book coming. And I, I told her which one. And she goes, oh, I have that one. Oh, look, Kathy does too. <laughs> Well, anyway, it is on Amazon, and uh, there's uh, Mary's channel. Somebody was talking about Mary, so there's Mary. Yeah, Mary's awesome. Uh, there's uh, okay, so she spins Juanita, i.e., Littlefoot, is uh, knitting a sweater, and uh, she's on Instagram too. She posts some cute baby pictures. I'm just saying. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, okay, Janet. I mean, uh, Julie, Janet sent it to you. So we're going to, I'm going to show it to you, read a little bit out of it, and then I'll show you how I'm taking notes, and I got room to doodle and, and take, you know, and then I, I did sketch out my peppers to paint, and I just kind of wanted to write notes, make observations, but I just kind of wanted to show you how I'm, I'm kind of studying this book <coughs> with a sketchbook. Um, oh, you're going to confess you enabled the book? <laughs> Kathy enabled the book to Janet. Okay. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, Scoobs has it, too. And she said she thought Paula showed it. Oh, it's not that old. I don't know how years ago. The book isn't that old. I think it's 2019, 16, 16 2016. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and show it and talk about it a little bit. And, you know, and, and again, guys, on Monday, I showed a whole bunch of other nature drawing journaling type books. So if you want to see those, I don't know, I showed eight of them or something like that on the in this be toward the end of Monday stream. So toward the end of Monday stream, I showed a whole bunch of books like this one. And uh, so if you want to see some more variety then um oh you're gonna start your commission oh good Kalora I'm so glad I'm so glad we'll keep po posted on uh, IG make sure I'm post on on IG uh okay yeah we don't mind if you talk about your channel stuff but don't come in here just to spam guys thank you okay so I'm going to read the contents here. It's a big book. It's 300 pages. And I'm going to read the, uh, I'm going to read the contents to you other than the acknowledgement and why keep a nature journal observation and intentional curiosity projects that focus awareness methods of deepening inquiry, visual thinking and displaying information, your journaling kit and materials, nature drawing, media specific techniques, how to draw animals, how to draw wildflowers, how to draw trees near and far, how to draw landscapes. And he also has, John Muir Laws also has a couple of books on birds. So if you'd rather concentrate more on bird uh, note taking and drawing and journaling that he does have other books just specifically for um, specifically for uh, thanks Janet for, on birds so he does his acknowledgement he talks about how he's dyslexia or dyslexic and um, and some of the things that he's gone through and then when he got, went to college, how he met some of the other nature journal journalers like Hannah Henchman and um, different photographers. Here's the girl that he has um, doing some of uh, the, the writing for him, some of the writing um, portion of the book. Why keep a nature journal? Has a whole thing. Slow down, observe, discover, and see. Let me read a little bit of this. <clears throat> Writers, naturalists, and scientists in all disciplines use journals to preserve what they have seen, done, and thought in the course of their work. My journal is the most important tool I carry into the field with me. 
It is even more necessary than my binoculars. Journaling is a skill for anyone who wishes to live life more deeply, a skill you can learn at any age and that will develop with intention and practice. Sketching and writing as you explore is the most effective thing you can do to launch yourself in the process of discovery. Keeping a nature journal is a way to rediscover the thrill of science. Observing and journaling will slow you down and make you stop, sit down, look, and look again. How often do we take the time to be still, quiet, and attentive? Engaging in this process helps you organize your thoughts, piece together answers, and ask richer questions. Once you slow down and look long enough to record observations in your journal, mysteries will unfold before you. At the core of all science are insatiable curiosity and deep observation, qualities that lead to the best kind of learning, learning motivated by your interest, interest, intristic wonder, hunger to understand, and ability to observe. I draw and work in my nature journal for three reasons, to see, to remember, and to stimulate curiosity. These abilities will be reinforced for you too every time you sit down to journal, and you don't have to be good at drawing. The benefit of journaling is not limited to what you produce on the page. It is rather found in your experience and how you think along the way. So that's his little intro to why you should uh, journal, um, nature journal. Hi, APG Jamie. Anybody else coming in I missed? So I'm almost done with the first chapter. I think I've got four pages left. Yeah, I've got four pages left. But so I've only done, look, I've only done two, four, six, seven pages. And I'm up to the why questions. But what I'm doing is taking the book. And this is just a, one of those inexpensive, uh, 40, you can get 40% off or, you know, I got mine at Hobby Lobby, but you can get them at Michael's uh, or Joann's or online. But the reason I like this particular one is the sketchbook is because the pages are white. I wanted white paper. And if you look at sketchbooks, make sure when you, before you buy one, just don't buy one because it says sketch, drawing, mixed media, watercolor. Open the book, feel the pages, look at the color of the paper, uh, see if it's white, cream, off-white, whatever color, because it, it makes a difference to me uh, when I'm, if I'm going to add color to a sketchbook. Oh, why are you doing that? No, no, no. Come on. No, no, no. I'm going to have to put you. No, no. Let's go. No. Oh, my gosh. I can't catch her. Come on. Let's go out. Oh. Hang on, guys. She's trying to get into things now. And I know she's uh, aggravated that I said it earlier, in case y'all weren't here, <laughs> when I said it earlier, we took Oliver to the vet yesterday. And ever since he's come home, she's been like mad at him and hisses and they get in tumbles. And um, uh, Pecola says because he smells different and she doesn't recognize his smell since he went to the vet. But anyway, so I'm having to break up fights and hissing contests and <laughs> that's hissing contests. Um, <laughs> so now she's just like all in everything. It's like, oh, my gosh, this cat's got to settle down. So anyway, the paper is real white in this one. So I started taking notes. And what I did in this, because I'm going to be doing nature journaling, um, that I wanted some space to draw some, whether it's from like, I'll show you in a little bit. I, uh, I drew some peppers from my garden and I haven't colored them yet. So it's still here. And uh, so if I want to have areas to draw in between the note taking, so I drew real big and I just drew with my food, a touch plastic nib, um, brush <laughs> tip it's it's just a plastic nib and it's kind of like the closest thing i could say to it is a flare the closest thing to it is like a flare um flare pen and this is what i wrote everything here with and um uh yeah i guess i could give him some catnip so anyway I wrote my notes really big. So there's the title and the author. 
and I'll, I'll draw, see, I'll use this, the blank space to draw other things in. But right now when I was reading it, I just started doing note taking. So he's broke this up first into, I notice, I wonder, and it reminds me of. So I wrote those out and I started writing, you know, just the main points. I just wrote out some of the main points and then I can go in here and add more, um, you know, little, little nature drawings in between. Here was, they had a quote by Sherlock Holmes. So I put that and again, I'll decorate it. So I notice I wonder it reminds me of. And so I just kind of just took notes. That's pretty much all I did while I was um, reading the first chapter, which I'm not done with. I'm not done with the first chapter. But these are the notes that I took out of the first chapter last night. So this is probably eh, maybe two hours worth of reading and note taking and um, thinking. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I did all this last night because uh, I just got the book yesterday. So, again, I left lots of spaces for, uh, what do you call it, uh, you know, more more uh, journaling. and I mean, more drawing. And then here's where I sketched out the peppers that I want to do today with the peppers that I have sitting there and color them and talk about the notes. And that's all I've got in here so far. So that's just almost the first chapter, almost the first chapter um, of the book which I'm going to read some out of, out of it. <clears throat> so again, the first chapter is curiosity, observ observation and intense, intentional curiosity. And so it talks about, again, I notice, I wonder, it reminds me of, and those are questions you, you answer to yourself and you write those notes in your journal, sketchbook, whatever you're writing in. So it's prompts to deepen observation. Those are, I notice, I wonder, it reminds me of. So who here that has this book has actually done some of the work in the book? Janet? <laughs> and so <laughs> I'm, I got to pick on Janet. And then intentional curiosity the joy of curiosity. And then uh, there's a the quote that I wrote out by Albert Einstein. The fairest thing we can experience is the mysterious. It is a fundamental emotion that stands at the cradle of true art and true science. He who does not know it and can no longer wonder, no longer feels amazement is as good as dead, a snuffed out candle. So that's uh, a quote by Albert Einstein. And, uh, talking about how we have lost our curiosity growing up, what kind of things happen to you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hi G. How's it going? G's been doing lots of artists, trading cards and all kinds of things. And her videos are longer. I like that G. I'm glad you made start making vi longer videos. Um, <laughs> you've done the whole, you have not, you have not done the whole book twice. <laughs> okay. So Kathy Arbor says it's going to be her winter project. If y'all do not follow Kathy Arbor on Instagram, if you want to see some absolutely stunning garden flowers, go follow Kathy Arbor on IG. She has no excuse to she, well, she does draw and paint. And she does uh, have a class on Thursdays. But uh, <laughs> she has a beautiful garden to draw from. And uh, <laughs> so anyway, he talks here about spending time with children can be a delightful reminder of just how many questions are possible. On a walk in Muir Woods, Na Muir Woods National Monument, I overheard part of the conversation between a boy and an adult. And, and he uses this as an example of why we, how, how we lose our curiosity. Child, how come the redwood trees are so big? Adult, they grow taller than the other trees so they can get more sunlight. Child, why do they need to get sunlight? Adult, 
all plants need sunlight. They get their energy from the sun. Sun is like food for trees. Child, why don't the other trees grow just taller too? Adult, because they can't. Child, why? Adult, enough of the questions already. <laughs> And, and he talks about how not only do we do this with kids, but we do it to ourselves. We do that with ourselves. When we don't have an answer to something, you know, uh, unintentionally, mentally, we tell ourselves, well, enough with the questions on. We can't figure that out. So let's just, just quit asking. And um, so it's, he talks about curiosity and wonder and asking questions. Scooby said, I drew some rocks from the book for the rock nine fibs drawing prompts. I have read the first chapter. Uh, now the cats are meowing outside my door. <laughs> Might have to let her in, but we'll see. Um, asking questions, embrace your curiosity. Uh, and I wrote a lot of these down. That's what that's what I wrote in here. A lot of the main points and some of the quotes. And uh, move from observation to question uh, to questions, seeking answers. And he write he tells you like what kind of questions to ask. All right. So y'all know we've in the Society of Idea Collectors we are already ask who, what, where, why, when, how, and and Mary's why not is added. But anyway, so he, and I did write these down, the main point, um, like the six questions of like who focuses on identity and identification. And he does talk about how you probably know that a lot of these questions are answered by other people, like how much does a duck weigh? You, you don't, you can't tell that. You can kind of maybe guesstimate from looking at a duck. And if you have cats or dogs, you can probably know. But do you know how much a mallard actually weighs? Well, no, you probably don't. But you can probably know that you can find that information on the internet or other books, you know, that information is available. But what you're trying to do is get as much observation as you can. And you can still write down those questions like how much does the mallard weigh? Well, you won't know by observation other than maybe a guesstimate, but you know that you can find those answers later. So the, the who focuses on identif identity and identification. What focuses on describing events, broad trends, phenomena, and behaviors. Where focuses on location, whether local or large-scale geography. Um, and he, he gives some sample questions in here. I'm just talking about the focus, uh, focus of the question. When focuses on timing. How focuses on mecha mechanism and or process. Why focuses on reason or meaning and he gets into he gives more examples and I don't want to make this sound like dry scientific observation and and that's it he gets into how the wonder of it and he gives an example here's one right here this is a this was a good example um is that where it was no that's not it wait where did I find where did I see that he talks about writing down questions that occur to you that may have nothing, just the curiosity questions. Like I don't see where let me, I was trying to find that quote. Hang on. It's on this side of the page. Cause I just remember that it was on this side of the page. Um, Well, what essentially what he said was you might like if you're looking at a poppy, the bowl of a poppy and you look at it, you think, wow, that looks like a radar, you know, like a, a radar uh, dish, you know, well, write that observation down. And he made the point of there may be a reason that 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 bowl shape looks like it does. Does that plant? Why is it shaped like a radar dish you know kind of thing and so write those kind of things down that occur to you it may seem and he says you know it may seem silly or like not have anything to do with the plant itself but when i'm looking at like my collage work when i'm doing my 
um, mixed media collage in the abandoned books. Those kind of things are occurring to me all the time when I'm doing those uh, altered books. And um, from the, oh, I gotta let the cat in. She's driving me crazy. Okay, okay, come in, come in. But you can't come up on the table. Oh my gosh. She's clawing at the door. So um, anyway, <laughs> it's so hard to do a stream some days, guys, and concentrate. So, um, so he wants you to write down those kind of questions or those kind of things that occur to you that occur to you while you're, uh, you know, he talks about the shine and the illuminesce on the duck's head. Why does it look one color in the light? And what does that remind you of? You know, the things that it reminds you of can be as important as the questions that are scientific. Like, you know, there's a scientific reason the duck's head is shiny and illuminate, you know, that kind of thing. Um, let's see, put it, if guys, if you are talking to me, put it in caps, because otherwise I probably won't see it. Okay. So let's see. Yeah. Like here, some of the questions you come up with may not be answerable in the field, but they may have been asked before and studied by their people. Like I said, how much does a duck weigh or stuff like that? So, um, So that's as far as I got the main, I'll go ahead and t write, show you what I wrote down as the main things. And then I'm going to flip through the book and show you some of the things that he talks about. I haven't got to yet as far as reading or studying them. So these, I of course wrote down the book name and the, um, the uh, title and the author. And again, the three points he makes in chapter one is I notice, I wonder, and it reminds me of, and those are the first things um, I notice until new ideas come. Begin with something small. He talks about a rock or a something small. And then he gives you some, you know, the step-by-steps of what to do when you notice something. Um, and then I wonder... After observing your objects, start to ask the questions. And I wrote down the questions. And asking questions deepens, deepens your engagement with the subject and broadens your focus to search beyond what you already know. This helps develop your curiosity and your ability to seek out the edges of your understanding. And again, I left all these spaces to draw in. Um. <laughs> Y'all are funny in the chat. It reminds me of, and then everything your subject reminds you of. So like I said, the poppy bowl, what does that look like? What does it remind you of? You know, um, when you look inside and you see the little black stamens, what, you know, what comes to your mind? And it doesn't have to be really even related to what you're looking at. Just what occurs to you? What, what comes to your mind? It's kind of like mind mapping. You know, when you put something in the center of a circle and, and mind map out of it, what does it occur to you? You know, first you notice the colors, the the texture, the, you know, and all the things about that. But then from there, it branches out even further. You don't just see red. You might see deep blood red in a poppy. And it has little lines and striations. I'm trying to picture one in my head right now. Um, you know, the little lines, does that, those little lines look like a road map? You know, what occurs to you when you're looking at something? And those are the things you want to write down because it's going to make your curiosity more attuned. And then reflecting on the process, take a moment to look at your object and think about how much you were able to learn in a short amount of time. By replacing by by placing your observations and ideas within the framework and knowledge of the world that you already carry, you will gain a stronger memory of your experience. This part of the process can also lead to scientific understanding. And I just you know I just wrote down notes that um, that were that seemed uh, important to me when I was reading the first chapter. And again, you know, here's a quote by Sherlock Holmes: "I see no more." I see no more than you, but I've trained myself to notice what I see. Those kind of, you know, just some quotes and um, 
intentional curiosity, train yourself to be more curious, be active, bold, intentional, and playful in your questioning, seek out mysteries, the mysterious, and the world opens itself to you. The joy of curiosity, embracing mystery, asking questions. So I wrote all that down. Here are the who, what, where, when, why, how, what the focus is. And that's There's that Albert Einstein quote. Um, seeking answers. Some things cannot be observed, measured, or tested. Uh, and, and I rephrased it myself. Questions outside the realm of science. It's important part of the human experience. Um, those things like uh, why is, you know, who is God? Those kind of questions. It's in, they're an important part of the human experience and to consider them using other disciplines like theology and philosophy. So wrote that stuff down. Um, keep asking deeper questions. And then here's where I left off by drawing my little peppers, my pepper plants. But before we get into doing that, I want to do a little bit more um, going through this book. So hopefully, I know you can't read it, obviously, but you can see some of the pictures and he gives you prompts and tips and all that. And again, guys, the book's 300 pages. We're not going through all of it, but I want to kind of hit the highlights. Okay, if y'all have any questions, put them in caps. So then we get into the why questions, and this is where I left off for this chapter. So there's still two more pages in this chapter and then, oh no, four more pages in this chapter. And then focus on the project. Projects that focus awareness. And as you can see, look at the detail that he puts in the drawings. And he, and he tries to put as much color and realistic stuff that he notices. But it's more or as important to write down your notes and your observations. And that's, you know, what he's really concentrated on so far. So far with what I've read. Make a collection or a field guide. Flow with the moment. And again, look at all the notes he's taken just by observing this bird. And um, I showed you, um, I don't know, maybe it was Monday when we are talking about it. When you can't, you, you, when you're trying to draw from nature, a bird in the zoo, things that are moving, you're going to have to just draw what you can. Capture what you can. And, uh, you know, white notes, write color notes, because they're going to move. They're going to they're going to fly away. <laughs> um, follow the questions. Mapping out my thought process. See, I haven't read any. I haven't read any further. I flipped through it, but I haven't read any further than where I was. Mapping out my thought process helped me think critically about what was going on. This approach. This is number seven out of I don't know how many steps. This approach took me through the initial stages of generating alternative hypotheses. The category, what am I not thinking of, helped me to keep an open mind. So, um, anyway, he was, uh, it looks like he was observing some birds that died. And so he was trying to figure out why, I guess. I haven't read it yet. Um, Tracy says, I got this book from the library once. It's good. Yeah. And it's got so much information. It's like, you know, like I said, I spent two to two hours just on chapter one. And that's not even doing the exercises, just the note taking of, of the observation. And because I just wanted to get the most out of this as I can, you know. All right. Focus on an individual, like a, a, a one bird here or a one. He's got a, a salamander here. Focus on the species, zoom in, zoom out. And he's just got so much information on every one of these uh, things. Look for patterns, then find exceptions, make comparisons, observe changes over time. And he talks about coming back, coming back to the same place uh, later in the season or just, you know, maybe even years later and see what's changed. Here's one poppy over 12 hours. And I know we're all not going to go out there and, and be scientists and sit there for 12 hours drawing one plant. But you can learn so much just by the way you observe and the questions you ask. And even if you just drew the flower one time, 
you know, um, just, you know, try to get out and do stuff. Don't make excuses and say, well, I can, you know, I, well, you all know the excuses. Uh, record an event, make a map, construct a cross section of the view, and then just different landscapes and the topography. And then inquiry toolkit, methods of deep, methods of deepening inquiry. Um, methods of expanding observation, writing, writing and attention, diagrams. But as you can see, he's got uh, tons, tons of information. And I'm just, I'm getting all sucked into it, just flipping through it. <laughs> <laughs> the little curiosity kit, you know, binoculars and, and a ruler, Janet, a ruler, <laughs> visual thinking and displaying information. And uh, yeah, so I don't know, maybe when you were in school and the teachers made you do boring assignments, it kind of made you not want to do this kind of uh, exercises because you think it's going to be boring. But I think to me, what occurred to me the most on keeping it fresh and not boring and not tedious and not um, mechanical is to ask the questions, ask the questions is one. And the other is, is to ask questions that really you would not think like the poppy thing. Why is the poppy shaped like it is? Or, you know, ask those kind of questions or what what does it look like? What else could it, it look like? I, for instance, look, I just looked over at my pepper and it was sitting over there. It looks like a water slide. Look, that looks like a water slide to me. And so as an artist, I'm also thinking, and an illustrator and a, you know, ideal collector, I'm thinking, what if you drew a water slide made a water drew one out of peppers what if the water slide you see at the water slide park were peppers red and green ones like the green ones could be the easy water slide and the red peppers could be the skinny water slide that you're going to be really going fast and maybe you know <laughs> i can make up a whole story with peppers and a water slide <laughs> But you have to kind of, you have to make yourself, you have to make yourself think about those things and not just say, oh, it's a green pepper. You know, it just, I just looked over there and it looked like a water slide. So those are the kind of things he's talking about to write down and note what's going on in your head, not just what's going on in what you see. <clears throat> Um, well, you'd have to really study. You'd have to, if you, if you don't know, oh, so Fran said, well, where would you find the answer as to why that poppy has that shape? Well, I'm sure there are lots of uh, botanists that have studied. It's probably to best capture water more likely than not. If I had to guess, Fran, the poppy is like that to capture the water. Uh, but do poppies need more water? Um, those black stamens in a poppy, you know, who knows? You'd have to research a poppy. But that's the kind of thing that he said that you're not going to find some answers out in the field. You may not find out why a poppy has the bowl shape that it does until you go and research it more fully from people that have botanists that have studied a poppy more in depth and researched it more, you know. But the point of it is, is as an artist, creator, writer, if you want to make up stories or illustrations or um, and you want to have more curiosity and, and ideas like that, that's why you have your Society of Idea Collector notebook where you can go, oh, my gosh, that pepper looks like a water slide. <laughs> you know? And it may look like something else to you, you know, you may get some other ideas from it. You know, it, it could, it looks, it could be, look, it looks like a parrot. If I put an eye on there, look, it looks like a parrot. Here's his wing. Here's his wing. You see, I know y'all can see that parrot in there.
<laughs> so anyway, um, that is his point is, is to write those questions down. Um, little creative. I have, um, I don't know how many, uh, 75 videos on a uh, society of idea collector. Yeah. It's just a place where you collect your, your ideas. S O I C society of idea collectors. Um, but I have, I'm not going to get into it right now because I want to concentrate on this, <laughs> but I do have tons of videos. And, uh, so anyway, guys, look, see that wing right there and his beak. But I, I saw it looking at it this way, and that's when I saw a water slide. But anyway, his point, his point in the book is to write those things down. It obviously is not a water slide, but does, you know, maybe there's something about why it looks the way it does. So write those things down. That's the point. Write it down. And I'm always telling you, even if you write things down on a post-it note, if you don't write it down, you will forget it. You will forget it. I'm telling you, you've got to write it down. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> thank you, Pacola. Pacola's talking about that I have. Um, <laughs> if you want to be a member of Society of Idea, just uh, email me your name and address so that I can put you in the, if, for I do giveaways occasionally for the Society of Idea Collector, other than other giveaways that I do. But uh, you just tell me what kind of book you use. But the idea is to be curious. Okay, be curious. All right. So let's see. Nature's blueprints. And if I'm sure sometime in school you have cut open an apple. This is a tomato here. And he's looking at different aspects of it. But I'm sure at some point you have cut an apple uh, or some other fruit in half and stamped it. You know, you probably had some tempera paint in a plastic or a, in a paper plate at school. And the teacher had you dip your apple in it and make a stamp. You know, those kind of uh, exercises were geared to make you curious about how things look and why they are what they are. <clears throat> so anyway, write, write those questions down. See, look at all these questions and, no and notes that he has on observation. Let's see what he says here. All right, so he wrote the petal, the, the stamen, all the different parts of the plant. And of course, if you're not a botanist, you may not even know what the parts of the plants are called. Well, that's okay. You can still observe what you see and find out more information about them later. Uh, I watched a bee crawl between the parts of the, the flower, flip upside down and collect the pollen. Question. How do iris flowers avoid self-pollination? And then he has a little thought bubble cloud. Could it be that the little, the little flap of the, of the style of the part of the stamen is pressed open as the bee comes into it and closes as it leaves? So he's making little observations about that. So those are the kind of things that you don't know. But you could ask those questions later if you really wanted the answer to those scientific kinds of questions. Or for me as an artist, I'm going to be more attuned to how I can use this information in my art. That's just how I'm going to think about it. But it also trains you to be more observant, to ask more questions. <clears throat> whether I want to do a scientific study of anything in particular or not. Like I told you, I started doing a study on the bee, on bees. And uh, I, I started doing a page. I'm trying to think of where that page is right at this moment. I can't think of where it is uh, in what, in which sketchbook it is. But I, so I started doing a, a thing on bees. So I wrote out the honeybees, the bumblebee. And I said, well, I wonder how many kinds of bees there are. There's like 20,000 species of bees. And I went, oh, no, I don't. I'm not that interested. <laughs> I'm not going to study 20,000 species of bees. Uh, if I was an entomologist, I would be more, I, you know, I would. But for me as an artist, I want my, I'll give me my top five bees. 
Give me my top five. What's generally known about bees? They pollinate the flowers. The size is what, you know, the queen bee does this, does that, you know, that kind of thing. Give me my top five bees and that information. But I'm not, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm not that interested in 20,000 species of bees, and nor do I want to take the time. But it, But I did find that out. I did not know that. So I did find out some information just by trying to draw a honeybee, a bumblebee, a couple of kinds of bees, right? A couple of kinds of bees. <laughs> so anyway, you may not go into as depth as a naturalist or a scientist would or a botanist or, a, you know, he's... Um, you know, what is, a, what is the study of birds or ornithologist, uh, you know, because he's got other books on birds. But you can still observe and ask questions that can be useful in your own creativity, whether that's drawing, writing, whatever it is. Or just being curious. Um, air, it talks about arrows and shapes and drawing things. I have, again, I've only read up to here, and you saw the notes I took. That's as far as I've read, uh, other than just flipping through and seeing, you know, a few things like this. So, uh, yeah, yeah, you can't, yeah, you're not going to spare years to find the answer. Well, and it just depends on what you're interested in. If you're interested in bees, bugs, birds, butterflies, you know, whatever it is, you know, fruits, vegetables, uh, the flowers, the fauna, the fish, you know, the mammals, <laughs> whatever it is. You're, you're going to do more research on the things that interest you. The point is, is you should have some things that interest you. You should have some things that interest you. <laughs> and, and this just keeps you curious. You don't have to be... You don't have to be a scientist to enjoy taking your sketchbook with a few questions and answers outside and being observant. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying you got to turn into John Muir laws. <laughs> you know? Hi, Deborah. Um, yeah, develop more curiosity. Yeah, well, that's what this, this will do. Create your own nature journal. And he talks about the minimalist. Um, and a color pencil kit, watercolorist, pen and ink, mixed media, and making your own kit. Now, if you all uh, remember, I showed some of Claudia Nice books um, on Monday. At the end of my show on Monday, I showed some different nature journaling uh, books. So go back and watch the last maybe 20 minutes on Monday if you just want to see some other books. And uh, Claudia Nice does a lot of pen and ink and watercolor. And so, you know, he shows you and talks about the tools and the different ways. I love while I love using a ballpoint pen and just sketching with the ballpoint pen. And depending on how much time you have, I showed you how in that uh, pencil sketchbook where I drew from that TV show Sunrise Earth, it was all just done with a pencil and note taking. Um, I, the, one of the things I don't like about pencil drawing is I, you, you can, of course, uh, seal it with a spray. But, you know, in the meantime, you're smearing it and you're touching it. And I, I like drawing with a ballpoint pen. Uh, I can just get a lot of information down. I can write notes if it doesn't look like what I want it to look like. I can say, oh, that bird, that bird is supposed to be fatter. Or I can just make the sketchy fatter. You know, there's just there's different tools will have different functions, and it'll it'll and unless you go out and try different ones, pencil, pen and ink, watercolor, uh, unless you go out and try them, or at least try them at home. You know, like I said, look guys, here I put, <laughs> cut up a pepper here to draw from today. Um, unless you try different ways and maybe I'll do it two or three ways just to play with it you won't know what you like you won't know hi Kenny you won't know what you enjoy and so then you know when you go to the zoo and you're or the museum or the natural history museum or you're just out walking you know you walk your dog you pick up a leaf whatever if you don't try the different tools 
you know, and it doesn't have to be expensive. But if you don't try them, you won't know if you like them or not. You can say, oh, well, I tried using um, a, a pen once. Yeah, yeah, okay. You're looking for excuses. Instead of looking for excuses, maybe write down your excuses. Write down, why do I not like to write with a pen or draw with a pen? Why don't I do it? Is it because when I was in school, I tried to erase a pen mark and my teacher gave me a zero for a big messy blob on my paper? Could be, you know, that could be why. Or, you know, do you not like writing with uh, drawing with pencil because it smears? Like I think about that, but I still like to draw with a woodless graphite because of the different thins, thicknesses and shading I can get when you're at a museum or, you know, drawing at the aquarium where that, you know, the fish and everything are moving real quick. And I, I'm not one to take watercolor and color stuff with me when I go and draw at a, a aquarium or the museum or something. I just want a pen and pencil and a, and some a little pad of paper. Cause I will, I can write my notes enough where I I'm getting my observation by my own notes. Like I can write down the size. I can write down who did it. Why do I like this artist if I'm at a museum? What are the colors? I don't have to have the color. I can say this is yellow ochre and sienna. And, you know, I can write notes. And that makes you observe. Yeah, Kathy says, I enjoy the process. The end result is a bonus. Exactly. You have to just want to be curious and learn. And if you get a beautiful watercolor painting out of it at the end, more power to you, you know. <clears throat> yeah. And so write down, write down why, write the excuses down because there's a reason for them. There's a reason for them. Did you, and, and I know we all have been guilty of getting a brand new book and oh my gosh, I can't, I can't mess that page up. Well, there's there's different people have written about that as well. I'm not going to get into that. But, you know, oh, I messed up that page. So, oh, that one's out. Let's move on to a new one. <laughs> you know, there's all kinds of things. Okay, so drawing essentials. And he talks about all the different kinds of pens, mechanical pencils, pencils, uh, erasers, and all your tools that are usually covered in most art books. And most of us here have been acquainted with many art books. Many art books. Hi, Mary. And, um, and, and there's Mary, we were talking about questions earlier, Mary, the who, what, where, why, when, how, did I miss one? And Mary always says, oh, well, why not? <laughs> and uh, Mary is like, she's like my little princess of a society of idea collectors. I don't think I have come up with as many ideas with one topic as Mary can come up with. I'm telling you. If you want to see something expanded and expanded and and so many ideas coming out of one thing, Mary. Mary is your girl. Okay, selecting and organizing color pencils, picking out the right journal. and talks about different kind of journals, the sewn bound, the spiral bound. And everyone has its pros and cons. You know, there's good and bad about every kind. You know, do you want a watercolor? And so you have a watercolor um journal and i would recommend having a couple different kinds if you're going to do sketching and and want to do a finished watercolor then you're going to probably want some nicer watercolor paper but at first if you're just going out picking up a leaf and drawing in the field you're going to be so worried about messing up that watercolor paper you're not going to sit there and ask the questions that we talked about you're not going to be thinking about what does this remind me of does this remind me of a water slide you're not going to be thinking about that what you're going to be thinking about is I'm messing up this piece of paper. Oh my gosh, I didn't get that color mixed right. Oh no, no, it's smeared, it's smeared. Oh, I don't have, oh, you know, you know exactly. <clears throat> Y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. Y'all know. <laughs> so you don't want to be stuck in something like that. So if you get you a cheap the sketchbook or some just, you know, even if you get copy paper fold up the copy paper in half and make your own staple it and make your own little book to take outside and draw from it's much better than being all fretty and worried and oh my gosh i can't do this i'm gonna mess it up don't you you're, i'm telling you're just stifling yourself 
from the get go. You, <laughs> you're just you're throwing out, you know, uh, problems that you don't need to have. Uh, yeah, Carrie Smith's pocket scavenger. Now, here's the thing about doing, and I d trust me, I've read and have had every single Carrie Smith book, all of them. My uh, Cameron has them all now, <laughs> but uh, I've had all of them. I think there's 10 Carrie Smith books. I don't remember how many there are. They are excellent. They will get you, it's like this. It'll get you thinking and questioning and asking, um, asking, asking questions and things like that. But the problem with too many other books like that, when you're trying to go out and observe for yourself, you don't want to be so stuck in one person's method. That's one of the things I liked about this. It's more of a scientific questioning method and mode rather than one person saying, go find a leaf, you know, paint it red, you know, that kind of thing. Not saying Carrie Smith's doing that. I'm just giving an example. When you use other people's prompts like that, nothing wrong with it. That has its place. I do it. We do it here. I pull out our thousand and one ways to be creative every week. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. So don't email me. What I'm saying is you want to ask the questions for yourself. That's what this book is talking about. Observing for yourself. Asking your own questions. Seeing what you think. What you see rather than some through somebody else's eyes that's that's all yes exactly cindy lee don't be a fear <laughs> okay so then he talks about customizing your own watercolor palettes um making your own palette like this is just out of the little tin altoid tins and some of the little um, half pans and squeezing out, you know, and I showed y'all this earlier. Janet sent me, <clears throat> Janet had M gram. They're, they're not cheap. So don't start, don't go out and buy you a bunch of M grams. I didn't. Janet sent me some extra. I wasn't going to go spend the money on some M grams because I'm not a watercolorist. When I do watercolor, it's going to be something like for the purpose of sketching and getting down notes and colors. I have done a few watercolor paintings in my time, but it's not what I do. And Janet knew I was not going to buy any M. Grams, but she wanted me to test out the hunt. They're made like they're like honey binder and they're very they stay kind of sticky all the time. And I added some other colors in here as well. But I'm just going to be honest, you know, if I was going out, if I didn't have this, which I would not have purchased myself, I moved um, Janet's, she sent me the M grams, I moved them into this so I'd have more space and have them all here. She sent me that nice little box, which I'm going to use for other things. I'm going to move something else into that box. But anyway, because these were sticky like this, I thought this would be a better, better use with those particular brand of paints. But I'm telling you. I will use, I'll just use whatever, these little Prima or the little Jane Davenport's or this kind of thing is perfectly fine to me for field work. But again, I'm not one to much do this kind of stuff out. If I'm at a museum or the zoo or a, the aquarium or wherever, I am not, I'm just going to be honest, I'm not taking any color with me. I will take my pen, my pencil, a sketchbook. I will note take colors. But then again, I've used color enough. So I, if I make a notation of a, an olive green or something or, you know, whatever, I know that color. When I make my notes, I know what I'm talking about. So, but if you're not used to, if you just say green, you know, oh, that uh, fish was green. That's not going to really do it. <laughs> you know, you're not going to get the information unless you write down the dragon fish, that, that leafy looking fish. If I, unless you write it down and make a note, go look it up later. Go look up the color later or something like that, but at least draw it, sketch it, write your notes about it and get as much information as you can with a pen and pencil. Cause that's what, that's what I do. I just don't do all this kind of stuff. I just don't take the time. I'm moving from thing to thing, from fish to fish, painting to painting. 
and you know, and I'm not, I'm not there hours and hours and hours. If you have that time to do that and you want to take something where you can, you know, have your little water brush and, and something like that, do it. It just depends on how much time you want to take, how interested are you in the colors of a fish, or do you just want to write and sketch and note take and observe? Okay. Okay, Scoobs. Tell mom hi. Tell her hi. <laughs> From the fibs. Friends in the box, in case y'all don't know what that is. And thanks, everybody, for uh, being here uh, lurking. So I don't know, you know, hopefully this is something interesting to you. I, I, I'm going to do a little sketching and watercoloring here in a little bit. But I kind of just wanted to review this book because it's an awesome book. Okay, then here's different choosing your watercolors. Um, and again, a book like this, if I didn't have watercolors like this, I'd be writing, I'd be swatching out my pencils or my markers or my, at least my, you know, I told y'all, y'all can make uh, uh, watercolors out of the super tip, Crayola super tips. You scrub this down on a, a piece of plastic, like packaging plastic, or on a, uh, on a, on a palette, you know, something like you can, you can scrape this down. And, uh. Make your own. Let's do a light and a, let's do a green. And you can take a water brush. I hope this one's got water in it. And eh, maybe a little. No, no. I need to fill all my water brushes. Here's one with some water. And you can take. And you have your yellow. And you have your green. And this is just kids Crayola markers and then if you mix them then you have a light green so see what I'm saying you can just use just use kids super tip Crayola markers to make you a watercolor <clears throat> so there's always a way there's always a way all right And, you know, people say, well, you, you know, you and Janet, Eileen, y'all have so many supplies. Well, we've been at it for 50 years. <laughs> you know, you, you accumulate and, uh, you know, and you get a lot of supplies when you've been doing it for 50 years. Uh, let's see. Or you learn the tools. Hi, Devin. Devin, I sent out uh, Lucy drawing yesterday. So you should be getting it you know, by next week, going to Canada. Uh, but uh, hopefully it makes it. I did put cardboard in it, so hopefully it'll make it without uh, to Canada safe and sound. So, yeah, it's it, Lucy's heading your way, Devin. Um, okay, so drawing, and so now we're into the nature drawing. This is, I think, chapter three or four. Let me go back to the... Oh, wait, wait, one, two, three, four, five. We're, we're at chapter six here. Okay. The book's 300 pages, guys. All right. So then talks about, look, here's a group out drawing. You know, of course, you know, right now you're probably not going to get with a bunch of people, but uh, just different. Uh, remember the big picture. Identify and use flow triggers. Getting into flow. There's all, you know, and again, this is the kind of stuff that I'm going to write down nice and big in my, um, in this, in this uh, sketchbook. I'm going to write all this nice and big and then the points, the main points that I want to concentrate on. I'm going to write them real big like this and then I'll do other little drawings in between. Um, so this is just a way to remember things. And if you write things down, I'm sure most of y'all know this, but if you read something and i don't remember the percentage but if you read something if there's a 10 percent chance you'll remember it if you read and say it there's 20 if you read write say it all three um then you're going to remember it 50 percent if you read write say and i don't know but anyway the more you interact with the information the more you're going to remember it and so, you know, I figured if I'm writing it big and drawing with it and making its own book, I'm going to remember it a lot better. 
Okay. Um, so, okay, here's a little thing about how to draw. Uh, order of operation. The order of operation is my approach to drawing any subject in the field or in my studio. One, look before you draw. Two, block in basics, light and loose. And, you know, that's like shapes and things. Three, stop and check proportions. Four, draw the subject on the framework with increasing bold and confident lines. Five, add value and color. Six, add detail in the focal areas and the foreground. Seven, stop before you overwork the drawing. Um, so observation, and I've talked about this, and so is drawing on the right-hand side of the brain or drawing on the right side of the brain. Um, it's more about looking than it is about the drawing. It, it's more about the seeing because you want to draw what you see, not what you think you see. You know, um, you have to observe to do that. You have to really look at something. And that's another good book on, on drawing. But anyway, that's what he's talking about. Look before you draw. Just really look at it. And you can start by shapes like here. He didn't start drawing this, this bird here. Look, he, he started with shapes. <clears throat> so, uh, and this book that, uh, the Sketch Encyclopedia, this one right here, 900 Drawing Projects. We've shown this before. It's a big mama jamba too. And this, if you want to get used to drawing, like get used to shapes, and, and, and the essence of the what you're drawing, this is a good one because it shows you how to look for the shapes first before you start just trying to do this, right? And the more you've done this, the easier it is for you to start quicker and, and do, get to this point easier because you're used to seeing the shapes. Like, all right, here's a good example. Look, this one just popped up. This See this how this looks right here? Remember when I, on Monday, was it Monday? that I drew, <laughs> when I drew the uh, red panda, I started like this. I started just drawing the, sh you know, I, even though I drew it with Conti crayon on a brown piece of paper, it's still the same thing. You start by getting your shapes in. Hey, Gail. So, uh, so he shows, he talks about that. Now, I'm not going to go through this whole book, but I want to get to the, yeah, I wanted you to get the idea what he has in it. Um, so here's drawing a skull, look before you draw, structure and shape, blocking it in, and, uh, so you can kind of see how it, he does it here. Hi, Fran on the edge. Anybody else that I miss coming in? Thanks, everybody, for being here. So, again, as I'm working through this book, and I do plan, even though I've done a lot of these kinds of things in other books and other practice, I'm going to at least make an effort to get, um, a, you know, a quick note on it and, uh, and then use, you know, sketch out some different, uh, just, just to make myself be observant, you know, more observant. You can never, how can you ever be too, too observant? But again, I got this book out to write down my notes from the book. This, this book is just going to be all this, all the notes in this sketchbook are going to be from this book. And I'm writing really big and I'm going to draw, I'm going to draw uh, around my notes in this one. And whether I take this one or a similar one outside to draw or whatever, this is going to be more apt to what I will take going outside because it's just more convenient. It's just easier to, you know, take something like this, right? <clears throat> okay, so I'm just going to kind of flip through here just so you can kind of see. See how, see how he blocked out the dragonfly there? And the more you do this, the quicker you get at it. You've never seen the sketch encyclopedia, CL? Well, I'll, I'll bring that back out in a minute. Uh, here's some drawing salamanders and the different note. Note no, how different eyes are. I did a whole study one. It's been some years here. But we drew, I looked up different 
frog eyes, salamander, snake. What else? We did like four different eyes, four or five different eyes close up. So you can see uh, different ways that eye irises and the eyes look. <clears throat> So I hope this is inspiring you, whether you get this book or one similar, or just go online. You can find a lot of this information on the internet and write it down, write it down in your Society Idea Collector Notebook. But uh, look, tracks, writing down tracks. Then the, Now the next chapter is on wildflowers. Let me get a sip of my juice, guys. <clears throat> different parts of flowers the shapes of flowers the kinds look foreshortening and look how when you look at it at the side versus looking straight down um and of course every flower is and here's the leaves every flower is going to have their own specialities uh pine cone here but remember on um monday's show at the end when i was showing the nature books the one the uh, Marjol Kosh, I think her name, where she drew uh, bird nest feathers and then seed. I forget the names of them, but I showed that on yesterday, um, Monday's show. Then trees, tree branches. And see, that's something, if you're afraid to draw something like uh, an animal where you think you're going to mess it up, start with the tree branch. Who's going to know if you messed it up or not? You know, try to observe it as best you can. But if you got a little line out of place, unless you told somebody, they're not going to know that that wasn't, you know, supposed to be there. Like I tell y'all, when you color in different artist color books, and you're trying out new things and new shading and new colors and new techniques, or you paint something in or white, white something out, you know, um, Kirby is not going to email you and say, uh, uh, Oh, that wasn't there. It's not going to happen guys. You gotta, you know, don't be a fear. So drawing water, <clears throat> watercolor, watercolor in the skies, wet and wet sunsets. So anyway, there's got a whole bunch of references and notes on the back. So and different things on why keep a nature journal, different ref, uh, different uh, people that have talked about observation and intentional curiosity and his notes and his references. So uh, let me just go ahead and read about the author. Naturalist, educator and artist John Muir Laws, Jack passionately loves nature and celebrates life with curiosity, creativity, and humor. His sketches are informed by careful observation, extensive field experience, lots of practice. Jack's connection with nature began with explorations when he was a child, a regular part of family trips. His love of the outdoors and confidence in the wild grew through participating in scouting. His mother gave him a sketchbook to record his discoveries in, and the world of nature journaling opened up. With the encouragement of his grandmother, he drew constantly and his ability to observe and, drew, and draw grew together. Jack has taught nature and science education since 1983. He loves teaching and sharing inspiration with others and gives classes, lectures, and field courses and consults with individual, individuals and organizations. Near his home in San Francisco Bay Area, he leads the Nature Journal Club, offering free monthly workshops and field trips to a vibrant community of artists, explorers, naturalists, and poets. He's a research and education association, and he goes on about his credentials and where he's got degrees from and stuff. Um, here's This is what I was trying to get to also. His other books, he has Sierra Birds, A Hiker's Guide, um, and then he has another uh, The Law's Guide to Drawing Birds, and uh, so, yeah, look him up. And again, this is a big Mama Jama 300 page book that I'm thoroughly enjoying and taking notes from. And uh, let me show, see uh, the other book real quick. <clears throat> the Sketch Encyclopedia. And it's by 3D Total Publishing. Uh, some of the other books that I have 
on sketching, drawing, fantasy drawing, character creation, uh, sci-fi, horror. I have a whole bunch of uh, books that Miss Melody gave me for my birthday a few years ago. They're also put out by 3D Total Publishing. So anyway, it's a big Mama Jamba book. It's broke out by... In the front here. Introduction to sketching, nature, creatures, food and drink, vehicles and transportation, buildings and structures. So it's it's all of that those things. Now for me, when I especially when I try to show something on the channel, um, it's kind of hard to see some of the detail. So you can always take a picture with your phone or your iPad. Take a picture of it, and then you can have a bigger picture to for reference. Because some of them are, they're very detailed, and they're very tiny. Um, you know, but you can see they have four steps for each drawing, starting with the shapes. Starting with the shapes. Yeah, from shape to detail, exactly. So... It's got a little of everything. It's got a little of everything in it. And then there's also uh, the one with the faces. And it's over there, uh, over in my stack. So, But there's also a faces one. And here come the cats. Okay, so what I thought I would do, I sketched this out this morning until the cat started trying to <laughs> get my peppers. And then I also, uh, I just bought some strawberries, so I cut a couple up. So I thought I would draw maybe some strawberries if the cats will let me. Now, here's the boy cat. And um, again, he's coming, probably coming to me like, why doesn't my sister love me anymore? I, I was telling everybody earlier, uh, he went to the vet yesterday for his checkup. And when he came home, um, and Pacola mentioned that it's probably because she doesn't recognize his scent because he's been in around other people. Other like well, technically hasn't been a, touching other animals. They don't let them, but um, you know, just being around an, another environment where he comes home and he has different smells on him, and so they have been hissing at each other since yesterday. They can't get close to each other, and they're especially her. She's hissing at her brother constantly. And I know he's thinking, why, do, why doesn't my sister love me anymore? <laughs> but Pacola says it usually takes two days or so for them to get back to s smelling each other. <laughs> Hi, Kenny. So anyway, yeah. So he's, uh, he's like a little bummed out that his sister is not... Um, because they, you all seen all the pictures. They sleep together. They bathe each other. They hang out together. They go from room to room together. And right now, it's like, you know, <laughs> yes, they're both fixed. Uh, Denise adopted them. Well, Denise rescued them uh, when they were like, I mean, just little bitty kittens. And uh, she's she messaged me and Hubster and said, I found the two cutest little kittens. Oh, my gosh. I think they were, I don't know if they were three. I don't know how. They were little when she got them. I found the two cutest little kittens, and we love them. And we just, we, we adopted them because nobody wanted them. They're brother and sister. And Hubster and I immediately looked at each other and almost exactly at the same time said, they're going to be ours in six months. And almost six months later to the day, Denise goes, nobody's home. They're lonely. We just can't, you know, we're gone to school and work all day and we feel sorry for them. And they're just so needy. They're so needy. When we come home, they're constantly what they want our attention all the time. They're so needy. And Hubster and I just looked at each other and shook our heads. And I said, get them fixed and I'll take them. And so... Now you leave your sister alone. She's sleeping over there. Y'all just kind of does this look at each other. So um, I said, Denise, get them fixed and uh, we'll take them. <laughs> and, and we did. So does Denise and my daughter share a brain? <laughs> That's how we got all your animals. I know. Right, Anita? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and we knew. 
because we know how busy that family is. They, I mean, they're rarely home and cats, you know, they're an okay animal to have when you're not around much, but these two, they want attention all the time. I'm not joking. They are two needy little cats. Well, now they're going on. I think they're almost three, two and a half years old now. Anyway, I'm sitting on my foot. And um, so anyway, we, we took them. <laughs> so we'll see how they do for a couple of days. Or give I, somebody mentioned giving them some catnip and then that gets the scent. You know, then that's all they're smelling then is catnip. And then so they'll go back to being okay with each other. Um, let's see. Okay. So, again, I drew these out. I drew these out uh, earlier. I set them out kind of. Now, you're not going to see them exactly like I see them because you're seeing them straight down. I'm seeing them at a little bit of an angle here when I drew them. Uh, I drew them at a little bit of an angle, so it's going to look a little different than, let's see, I have this one here, and then I had this one upside down this way. How did I have this one? There we go, like this. <clears throat> so I was just going to kind of lay them out, put a little detail. Um, I drew, I sketched them out in pencil, but I could go over them with pen, but I kind of want to do the watercolor thing. <laughs> but we could try some different things because it's hard to see on camera, even though I will zoom in. Let's go ahead and zoom in a couple clips here. There we go. That's a little better. Now I got to just kind of move it into the space. There we go. So you can kind of see where I drew them out. They're not exactly in the same position. I can see in the camera on the, on the, on the screen that they're not exactly where I had them. It doesn't matter, but I just kind of wanted to show you what I was drawing from. And uh, yeah. Bye Dawn. I always get Dawn and Laura mi messed up, mixed up because it's make a mess today. Uh, and Jersey crafter. I get the two of them mixed up. I call one Dawn and one Laura and I always get them mixed up. But anyway, I know their names, but I get them because <laughs> of their channels. Um, okay, so anyway, I can see some seeds. These are um, uh, peppers out of my garden. This one was more curled, so I chose it because it was kind of curly. And uh, I cut it, so you can see where I've cut it like that. So I cut this one. And so I just kind of, just to kind of sketch and uh, think of ideas. So again, I'll get a pen here. And um, so I, I mentioned before that this one looked like, let's see, did I get a pen that didn't work? And this is how small I write when I make note taking. I wrote those other ones big, so I had uh, just the book itself being a focus. Looks like a green water slide. So we talked about this a minute ago. Now you can make observations. You can say you can measure it. You can write down the size of it. I try to kind of draw it the right the same size, but you can write down any observations. Like if you have your ruler, Janet, you can write down the size of it and all that. Um, looks like a green water slide, and I'm going to put in in the parentheses. What would a red Red hot chili pepper, red hot chili pepper. And I'm going to write skinny. Water slide look like. And remember, you got your who, what, where, when, why, how, and all the questions that you can ask. Well, hi there, Eileen. Hope you're doning well. Don't be disappearing on us, E T E E. I lean the enabler or elf. <laughs> when you're not around, we worry about you. <laughs> so good morning, Eileen. Good to see you. Eileen's our um, she's one of our mods too, but you know, I think my show might be a little early for her. <laughs> I like to tease her. 
So anyway, that was just a question. I wrote that down because that's what we were talking about earlier. When you look at it, it looked like a water slide. But, you know, <laughs> it's just a question that occurred. And if you weren't here earlier, go back and watch where I talked about the questions and stuff that he asked in this book. Because that's uh, uh, important to our, our little study today. So now, should I go ahead and maybe do, let me get my, um, this is what I like to draw with when I'm out and, and, and about, um, it, because it can, it can draw thick, thin, and let me go ahead and do that back here, let me go back here, switch, so a uh, woodless, a woodless pencil, it's, what all it is, is graphite wrapped in plastic. And there's a whole bunch of different uh, companies that make them. This one is a nine. I think this one is a six B. They come in uh, two B, not to be. No, <laughs> it comes in two B. I think four B, six B, eight B. I don't remember. They, but they get the the higher the number, the thicker and darker the lead is. So I'm going to just show you how dark this is. And it's graphite, so it's going to be shiny. But look how dark you can get with it. And you can also get very thin. So because it is a woodless graphite and it's got that nice. Um, okay, baby, you're going to have to get off my table. It has that nice, um, thick uh, shave, you know, sharpened part. It's not just a point. It's a whole uh, tip like that. You can get so many different um variations and again let me hold it up because the lights come back here the light is flashing out the shine of the uh graphite but it is graphite so it is shiny and it is messy see but that's this is can be good if you want to shade something but it is messy right but I love the woodless graphite for the different things that you can get if you're sketching or drawing, you know, out. You can get the thinnest, lightest, and you can get the darkest, whitest. And uh, so it's really a great tool uh, to have. Okay. All right. So let's go back over here. Let me clean off my fingers a little because I'll be snaring it. So if I'm sitting here staring at this, I did just a light sketch with it first with a, um, I like these little paper mate disposable technical pens, but you know, I love my um, graph gear, my graph gear as well. And this I keep with blue lead, lead used, you know. I hate to say it, it's blue pigment. It's not little. It's not literally lead. So I always go lead. But anyway, it's got uh, blue in it. So um, if whoops, can't push too hard. Um, and this one's the light blue, but I have the dark blue, and I have all colors of lead. So you can put uh, whatever. And this is a this one is a point seven. Janet has all of these. She has the three, the five, the seven. I think there's a nine. I don't know if she has the 11, but I think there's five different sizes. And uh, it's got the thing here where you can pop the tip back in. So you're protecting the tip. And then you just push down here and it comes back out. And then you got the eraser and the lead goes on the inside here. And uh, but that protects. So it just snaps back in. And then this has like a little rubber, little rubber dot. So it gives you a grip. It gives you a grip and, and it's nice and smooth for uh, riding. And it's weighted. It's just a good weight. You feel like you're holding something substantial when you hold a graph gear. When you hold a graph gear, they're just really nice. Um, no, Gail, they're not really. What, uh, Janet, what are they? Uh, do you remember? I, well, we got them at Jet Pins. Uh, you might be able to get them at other places cheaper, but I think at Jet Pins, they're like 12 bucks. But you take care of them and you just buy the, the lead, you know, it's going to last you forever. I love these. I buy them 10 in a pack. But once the lead is used up, you know, once it's used up, it's uh, gone. You throw it away. 
Do you ever reach for something like a 5.6 clutch graph? I know. <laughs> I reach for this, I reach for this, I'll reach for this, um, you know, a, a, a Faber-Castell, if I got my watercolor, I'll reach for this. <laughs> but I have all kinds, guys. I've got my um, Cola Race, but I don't use the, uh, I don't use the erasers that are on the Cola Race. The red, I don't like to have, because it can leave red marks, but I have those and, you know, just whatever right here. This is just a gra grab and go bag right here. <laughs> yeah, you've not seen you've not seen my pencil uh, wall here, marker wall. I won't show it to y'all now. Y'all might y'all might just run out the back door. <laughs> okay, so now I put them back in here. Let's get them back out. Let's get these back out. Um, where is my? Uh, okay. All right. So what I wanted to show you though is I sketched. I sketched it out real lightly, and, and the problem with doing something like this on camera is you can't see it, right? You can't see it very well. But if you want to do a watercolor where you're not going to see the lines, you have to do it like this. You have to do it very lightly, you know? I'll do one down here dark with it kind of shaded, but if you're going to watercolor, you want to do it. If you don't want the lines to show, you do it like this. Now, if you're like Claudia Nice, who I showed on my uh, books on my show on Monday, at the end of the show, go watch the last 20 minutes. She does pen and ink and watercolors. So she wants hers to really stand out. So I think I'm going to do, a. let's see here. Do I want to do, do it with the, And with a ballpoint pen, because I love me, I love just dry. I, I personally just like drawing with a big pen. Now, if I can find one in this, I think they're all in the other, other room. Let's see. Oops, let's put the Sharpie cap back on here. I know I had a, uh, I know I just had one. Ah, oh, here it is. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to draw a thought. Hi, Faithful Mass. Okay, working and lurking. You have uh, Happy Mail should be there. Oh, maybe tomorrow, Faithful Mass. I sent you a little Happy Mail. All right, so I'm just going to maybe draw each one of these in a different way. So let's just go ahead and, uh, all right, we'll just start with this top one here because I want to add watercolor to them too. So I just drew this very lightly, this pepper here, okay? And I just kind of drew the little shadow areas very light where I know if I want to add the watercolor in there, it's going to be darker in, right in those areas. And you and the idea, now remember, you don't always have to do this, but because we're working from the book that, you know, we were talking about today, the idea is to sit and really look and think about and observing. Observing. <laughs> observing. <laughs> as much as you can. And look, this looks like to me, and I'm going to take my pen to write with here. Um like a, uh, I see it as a scarecrow hat. Scare, how do you spell, what am I, scarecrow, I'm not spelling scarecrow right, scarecrow, a scarecrow hat. That's the first thing that occurs to me, look, doesn't it look like a scarecrow hat, or at least what we think of the scarecrow hat, like the Wizard of Oz, you know, look at that. <laughs> And again, if you're doing the nature point of view, you want to write down, you know, the, the colors. This is like a lime green. You know, if I'm just sitting here and if I wanted to do something real quick, if I'm sitting at my desk, and of course, if I'm not, I'll be out in the, you know, field. You know, I might want to do a couple of little color notes if I have something really handy. And I might put different greens just to see which ones look the, right, the, most, the closest. You know, I'll, I'll scribble. I'll write anything. Look, I wrote that blue. That's nothing to do. It's just a pencil test. But it's all for learning and observing. And I don't, it's, I'm not, uh, it's not a finished painting. So write all the notes you want. You know, write all the notes you want. So, but while you're observing, and he said, he talks about taking your time, going real slow and, and noting everything about it. 
Like I noticed that right in here, there's some like, this is like brown little tips in there. And I think is it, and I'm going to make a note again, I'm going from pencil to pen. Is it, um, I don't want to say rotting because that's not what I'm, is it disintegrating? <laughs> is it dying? Is it dying? Is that why there's those little brown tips in there? I mean, of course, it's off the vine. It's obviously going to start to rot, you know. Hi, Lauren. Anybody else I missed? Uh, and I, I, I don't know, Suzanne. That's kind of off topic for today. Um, so I might draw a little bit more shadow in here like this. Okay. So I'm just kind of following the lines here and the grooves and, and uh, the, the shapes of it, right? I could do it very lightly like this. Or I can, can you know, if I really wanted just to draw, if I was going to just shade it or color, not color it, and I'm going to probably do a little of uh, all of it on all of these. But, you know, like this is darker over on that side. It's darker right in there. But because it's pencil... I can turn it and twist it, and I can get different areas. It's a little bit of shadow down in there. There's a shadow right there. And, of course, there's a shadow underneath here. From my end, you may not see that, right? And then I see the shadow of the stem right here. It's curled, but you can't, I can't, I can't from here see the other side of this where I know it's curling, but I see the shadow of it from where I'm sitting. You, the, Yeah, you can see it right there. The shadow of it right there. And then again, this is darker right in here. Now, I probably want to sharpen this because it's kind of dull. It's okay for the side. But if I wanted to, uh, if I wanted to uh, draw a nice sharp point, uh, you might be able to... Uh, get a better detail and then there's kind of a little bit of a roughness right in there i'm just trying to observe as much as i can and, and show y'all as much as i can that i'm seeing right and and that may not be showing very well this kind of comes up here and then this kind of dips in right there so there might be a quick pencil sketch right but started with a light light pencil sketch like this but now i've got my shade some shading on there Really, there's a little bit more down in here that I can see from here. And you can continue on, spend as much time as you want, and more time, the better. Uh, you call it going over, Kathy? Just going over it? Yeah. <laughs> I think if she's talking about that. It was in cap, so I'm, I'm assuming she's talking to me. Um, so there's that. Now, if I was going to use my ballpoint pen and I'm going to go, I'm going to put some watercolor over the different parts. You know, some of it'll smear, some of it won't, depending on what you're using. I'm going to use a, a Faber-Castell, these pits, these are waterproof when dry. Uh, and usually you can get away with the ballpoint pen, a big pen with watercolor. But, you know, just depending on what you're using, if you want to go over it with watercolor. All right. But I'm going to do it just for the sake of the demo. All right. So now I've got this, this little piece right here, which that's the one that I thought looked like a water, uh, water slide. But let's just say I want to, I want to, uh, kind of do more of a, 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 you want to call it a scribbly like thing. I got it. It's not in the same position. I want y'all to be able to see it. But anyway, um, you can get thick and thin lines uh, with the ballpoint pen. And then after, after you, if you've penciled it lightly first and then go over it with the ballpoint pen, you can always erase your, you can always erase your uh, pencil lines too okay but i'm just kind of showing you i'm just i'm just kind of doing almost like a contour drawing following along here then they've got the lines in here but this is darker right in here this comes up and around 
I'm looking at it from over here, so I see a little bit more curve in this. <clears throat> And I might see a little bit different shadows than you do from this side. But and then you can you can also do shading. Like you can either do a scribble shade. And here, let me go over here to show you. You can do like a cross hatch. You can do just line shading. You can do a scribble shading. I love scribble shading, but it doesn't always go with what you're doing. Uh, it, this one might be better uh, for the sake of um, what is really the texture. The texture of the inside is more like a striation type of shading. So it might just be better just to do something like this kind of shading and curve it around. Because I'm, see, I'm seeing all the lines. I'm seeing all the striations of the inner skin of that pepper so I'm kind of trying to follow the the shape in there that you may not be able to see you're a scribbler Tracy <laughs> oh, but uh, and then you, you know you can get uh, you can keep going over it and get it darker but I still want to try to keep the form of the piece here so I'm kind of following the, the inside skin, if you will, for lack of a better word. I, I could write that down. Look. What is the inside of the pepper, in quote, or yeah, in quotes, skin? called because you know there's a name for it you know there's a name for the inside of pepper <laughs> you know there's a name for that and then down in here there's little seeds so i might put a little arrow though and um tiny seeds so and they're turning brown because it's been off the vine, you know, and it's been up here in my room for a couple hours, turning brown. But they're white. When you first cut it open, this one you can see a little better, but they're still turning brown in there too. You see there were white, uh, kind of a light green to white color, the little tiny seeds. But now they're, they're turning brown here, see? But when I first cut this, it wasn't. They were white. Oh, thank you, Flo. <laughs> okay, so this comes around here like this. This kind of comes up right here. So again, I'm looking at it from kind of another angle than you guys, but then this comes around up like that, kind of like that. And I'm going to play with wa uh, watercolor on all of these just to do it, okay? Do it. And the thing about a ballpoint pen, see how the ink is starting to ball up on there? You want to clean that tip off every now and then. Otherwise, you're going to get blobs. That is one thing about a ballpoint pen. you got to make sure and clean those blobs off. Is it oxid oxidation? Okay, I'm going to write that down because uh, she spins... Juanita is a gardener extraordinaire. I don't know. She hasn't been posting anything. Do you still do all your gardening some years ago? Um, uh, some years ago, Juanita would have, and Juanita, she spins, and I call her little foot because she has a little foot when she's doing her spinning. Anyway, um, beautiful, beautiful gardens. And then, um, then she had a fire at her house. But I think, didn't you do a garden after the fire to the next year, Juanita? Okay, baby. I know you can't come up here on mama's desk right now. Stay down there. <clears throat> there are artists who have studied what decaying fruit looks. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's so, somebody studied everything. Trust me. 
Somebody has studied it and you can Google it. But again, Janice and anybody else that is wasn't here at the beginning of the show, at the beginning of the show, we're talking about the law's guide to nature drawing and journaling. And we're talking about observation and asking questions. It's not that somebody may not know the answer to this in chat, but the idea is to ask the question. Hey, hey, y'all stop it. Stop it. Uh, the idea is to ask the questions, to write them down, and to see where that leads you. So, um, oh, oh, I'm sorry, she spins. Okay. I just didn't know why you quit gardening. Yeah, I did not know why you quit gardening. Uh, or I hadn't, I shouldn't say I didn't know you quit gardening because uh, you hadn't posted anything on uh, Instagram in the gardening department. Okay. Well, she knows a lot about gardening. I'll just put it that way because she's, uh, she it's kind of like uh, Kathy Arbor with her flowers. So yeah, the two of them could, between the vegetables and the flowers, I think we all could live. I'm <laughs> just saying okay so she says i am planning a small vegetable garden with my daughter next year okay okay and y'all follow she spins and i is that your girl uh, ig name um juanita she spins i can't remember if that's your ig name i think so she spins or juanita uh, yeah i think it's she spins stealing veggies and raspberries off the bushes <laughs> so um, okay, so now we've got that done with the ballpoint pen, and I might just write this down. I'm just going to write down Bic, and then over here, I'll write this one down as um, a woodless graphite. Because it's extra shiny and smeary. Look, extra shiny and smeary. Now let's go down here with the Faber-Castell pit. So, oh, this is the brush pen. I don't really want the brush pen. Could do it with the brush pen, but uh, maybe I'll do it with the brush pen and the regular one because the brush pen will be good for filling in. Okay, so I have the small, uh, the S, which is the small, and then the brush pen. It's a small brush, but still. Okay, so now I've got this piece right here. I'm trying to keep it so it's not interfering with the other piece, just so y'all can kind of see the shapes. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to um, kind of sketch this in with the with the uh, Faber Castell. This is waterproof when dry, but you can get thin and thick as well with this. And you can also cats under my table in my um, what do you call it in my <laughs> in my paper under there. I think they're both trying to get away from each other and they think I'm going to rescue them. All right, so let's see. I've got a couple little striations right in here. And I notice when I look on the camera, you're seeing, all, you're seeing a lot more of that light green, which would be right up in here. But from my angle... It just looks like a line. Because remember, I'm looking at it from this angle. So y'all are looking at it from like that angle. And now I could take a brush pen or you could do a dip pen. Y'all know I love me some dip pens. And I can do some of the... Uh, I can do some of the shadows here. And I could have colored it in with this one too, but... Just kind of showing y'all some different things. And then there's a shadow, a thin shadow right under there. And again, I could probably do some darker in here with uh, the brush pen. But it's more like, it's more like, like I did over here. But I could get some finer detail with this pen than I could with the, uh, big pen because that's the skin on the inside hi desert nana mary beth 
Don't forget, guys, put it in caps if you're talking to me. All right, so just so you can kind of see where, where we're headed, I might, I might do a little bit more, um, just maybe a little bit more dark here with the pen, just because I can sort of see it. Wouldn't quite be this dark, but I'm going to go ahead and put that in just because. So you can just kind of see how you can work with, this is the brush pen here. Uh, I'll write pen because it's not just a brush. Brush pen and Faber Castell Pit SB. Those two pens on that one. All right, and then what was what were we gonna do with what else did I pick out? Did I have anything else picked out? I guess I didn't. Well, you know what? Let's go ahead and go with, I could do pencil, but I'm kind of not doing pencil right now. I'm kind of just sticking. Let's go with a, let's go with a uh, green <laughs> ballpoint pen just because, right? So I'm going to draw. And then we can add some different uh, variations of green. We can have variations of green with the watercolor. But this has got all kinds of little seeds, shadow in there, and then there's like some lines coming out there. Just so you can draw whatever with whatever you have handy. Now there is brown in there. I'll put that in with watercolor. We'll see what happens. Just so you can kind of see some different things. When you're looking at it from down from your angle, this is wider. I look at the camera and I can see that this is wider from looking straight down at it, but I'm looking at it like at, like that, so it's not quite as wide. But I just want to get, give you all the idea. And again, when you do this, according to you know what he's telling you in the book, you want to take your time, you want to study it, you want to look at it, you want to observe it, write down notes. So you know, I mean, if you just think about what does this look like, you can look at it. It looks like, um, see, I could see this as a little, as a little fairy chair, a little chair for a little tiny fairy sitting in there in a forest, you know, or it could be a hat, it could be a hat, turn it up the other way, you know, and it could be a little, it could be a little fairy, a little fairy's hat. Or a little gnome, a little, you know, a little creature, hat, chair. I mean, just depending on how you look at it, you know. <laughs> Write it all down. Don't be afraid. Oh, I'm going to mess up my paper. That's not what you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be observing, right? Look at that. I just love the way that looks right there. I could take a picture and just love that look right there. <laughs> It just looks so pretty stacked up. Okay. <clears throat> so now let's go ahead and play with some watercolor. I'm going to, let's find, all right, I've got to go get some water in this brush. So hang on just a minute. Okay. Got a little water, a little water brush. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Thanks for all the lurkers, everybody uh, around, the, around the world that's here. All right, so I think what I'm going to do is, first off, I'm going to take my water brush and just the water. And let's just see what smears. Okay, the pencil, it's going to start smearing if I do too much. That's the graphite. And it's gonna have um, it's gonna have a lot of uh, graphite. <laughs> All right, here's the big pen. It's not really gonna move. I mean, I could probably make any of it move if I peeled peeled up the paper. Don't stop it! Oh my gosh, he came over to her. She's in the window. He came over to her just to hiss at her, and then walked away. And she's just sitting in the window, minding her own business. Although she has been the instigator since he came back from the vet. Um, okay, let's test this. And I don't even know. This is the, uh, what is this? This is a pin and gear, the Walmart brand. Pin and gear, they're all different colors. 
let's see what happens with that. Let's do it down here on the hat. Well, it's not moving at it. Well, I say it's not moving. I could probably make it smear a little bit, but this paper now is just like a sketch paper. It's not watercolor paper or anything. So you got to kind of consider that too. Don't go crazy with the water. Okay, so here is the brush pin and the pit pin, and they shouldn't move much. They might move a little on this paper. Okay, so what I want to do, though, is it looks like the Bic is the best one for going over with watercolor. I'm just going to put some watercolor on there just so, you know, and let's sort of move it over so you can see the colors there. Are y'all getting anything out of this? Are y'all enjoying this? We can't, they won't take them together, she spins. You can't even go into the vet. You have to take one pet at a time, put it in a cage. They come out to your car, take the pet, and take it inside. And when they're done, they bring your pet back out to the car. Or you drive up to the door. You don't, they don't, you don't get, you don't get to go in the vet anymore. Not even with a mask. So they can't go together. Oh, thanks, Janet. Thank you so much. Well, you know, they, they've been to the vet before, but he's, she's never got her nose out of whack like this time. Her turn to go to the vet's in two weeks for her checkup. Okay. We'll see what happens when she comes home with other animals. I know. Right, Flo? Right. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm going to get out my, um, I'm going to try to use my, uh, what do you call it, uh, colors that Janet gave me. And I'm going, I'm liking this color right here. So let me just get my water. Let's put out a little bit of water. These are highly concentrated. And so I don't need much, but I know I want this color. I don't know what, oh, there's a cat hair, Janet. Oh my gosh, she's so right. Janet said that the M. Graham honey um, tracks cat hairs. Oh, yeah, I know. Right, right, Julie? I know. Okay, well, let's move on, guys. Let's move on. Uh, let's, let's see what we, what, let's, let's concentrate on what we can do. All right, so I'm going to just start with the wash of, let's put this up here. And, and I'm going to just, I should, you should do a test. You know, and again, this is not um, this is not watercolor paper. So if you put too much water, it's going to pill. Okay, it's going to pill up. Now that looks that looks uh, good for the shadows. This actually looks like the shadow color from from here. You know, from what I'm seeing. But the rest of the pepper, the rest of the pepper is a little bit more yellow. So I'm going to throw this down like that. And we can put another layer. And because this lime green color is not really the color. That is too bright. So what I need to do, and I'm cleaning my brush off over here. What I need to do is I need to mix a little bit of the yellow. And that might be too bright too. A little bit more water. With that olivey green. See, that's a little better. That's a little better. It's just so concentrated. This You just need so little of the M. Graham, don't you? Don't you, uh, Janet? You just do not need much. It's so highly concentrated. So let's see here. Let's touch a little bit more yellow. Let's see. What, there we go. That's a little better. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of that in there. And maybe just a touch more yellow. I got to let it dry before you start layering up because this paper is just sketch paper and it's going to pill. You just want the idea. Yeah. Yeah, Jenny, you did tell me. Uh, you just want the idea of the color. I'm not trying to do a painting here. This is like your field sketching, right? If you were doing it. this If you want to do a nice watercolor drawing and painting, you want to do it on either mixed media or watercolor paper. This is just sketch paper. Okay, it's just sketch paper. All right, so now I want a little bit darker in some of the areas where I put the pencil. Okay, so that's probably about all I'm going to need. Just something like that. And you get the I, you, I get the idea of it. Maybe a little bit more up there. Okay, so now this stem has just the tiniest bit of little brown, little brown uh, sienna tips on it. A little bit of sienna in there 
very light, very, oh, you can't see it. I'm off camera. There we go. And just a little bit in that shadow right there. And then the rest is that same green. The pepper is the same green, but it just looks a little darker because it's in the, uh, the thickness of the pepper there. Okay. <clears throat> and again, I might want to do a little bit more shadow down here. But I have to be careful because the paper is peeling. The paper is peeling already. All right. I'm not going to put any more on there. All right. So let's go down here. Let's add a little bit more yellow to it this time. See if I get a little bit more. Let's move on to this piece. See what I can do with that. It's a little bit more yellow and green. Yellowy, yellow or green in here. And then it's got the it's got the um, right around here, under here. It's the darker part here and the shadow in the center there. So you can just see the different effects. This right here is picking up some of that graphite. See how I kind of grade it down just a little? It's because of the graphite in there, I, I'm pretty sure. Now, I'm looking at it in camera. It looks like, oh, it needs to be so much brighter. Oh, I'll add a little bit more lime, limey color green. And then again, in the sienna, a little bit of the sienna in the seed area here. And a tiny little bit right in there. So there's it with pen and ink. And again, you know, I'm, I'm being pretty quick about it. And I'm also looking at it from that angle. 